Welcome to the webinar, IDEA and Multi-Level Prevention System. This is one of 11 webinars developed by the National Center on Response and Intervention. This webinar takes a closer look at how the multi-level prevention system relates to special education. I'm Lou Danielson, and I'm going to serve as the facilitator for this uh, PowerPoint. And um, I have, um, I'm currently a senior advisor on the National RTI Center and um, currently also direct the uh, National Center on Intensive Interventions. Prior to uh, my work at the American Institutes of Research, I served uh, for approximately 30 years in the Office of Special Education Programs um, in the U.S. Department of Education. The RTI Center has developed a series of webinars to cover information that is important for RTI implementation. On this slide, you can see the different webinars available in the series. While you can watch the webinars in any sequence, we recommend that you first watch what is a multi-level prevention system webinar so that you have a general understanding of the multi-level prevention system. Following this webinar, learn more about how to select evidence-based interventions. If you've not already done so, print out the vocabulary handout, which will be useful for your note-taking throughout the webinar. Also notice that there is a video corresponding to this webinar that answers the question, how does RTI differ from previous approaches to providing interventions? I recommend viewing this video immediately following the webinar. One helpful way to check your understanding throughout the webinar is to complete the accompanying vocabulary handout. The handout provides a table with a list of key terms on the left side with columns to the right side for you to track your understanding before and after viewing the webinar. Before viewing the webinar, you should make predictions of the meanings of each term. Then, throughout the webinar, you will complete the final meaning column based on the definitions provided. Along with the picture sketch or example column, you can see how in this example, I was able to clarify the meaning of primary prevention after watching the webinar. If you have not already made predictions for the key terms of this webinar, please go ahead and pause the webinar so you can do so now. Press play when you are ready to continue. When thinking about how the levels of the multi-level prevention system in RTI relate to IDEA, it's important to remember that an RTI process cannot be used to delay an evaluation for eligibility under IDEA, that students with disabilities must be identified in a timely manner, and that long-term secondary prevention cannot be used as an alternative for providing services without an IP to a student with disability. And in fact, long-term tertiary intervention could not be also used for providing services without an IP to a student with disability. And I want to emphasize in this slide the, important, the importance of uh, timeliness, because as we've heard that often uh, students may be in Tier 2 or Tier 3 interventions for many, many weeks before, uh, before being considered um, as having disability, often with limited responsiveness to the interventions being provided. What about special education? Two groups to consider. Students who are already identified, that is, that are currently eligible for spe special education and receiving special education, and students being considered or being referred for special education, uh, eligibility consideration. So what about students who are currently classified and already have a disability? Although the design of the RTI model implemented is up to the state education agency, or in some instances to an LEA, it is recommended that special education staff and students with disabilities are included in the development and the implementation of the multi-level system. In this model, students with disabilities continue to receive access to core curriculum through accommodations differentiated instruction, and other support. Then, depending on the services outlined in the IP, students may receive ongoing secondary, unlike short-term secondary support, or intensive individualized services delivered by a special education teacher. Thus, complete removal from the core curriculum is not typically recommended because students are assessed against grade level standards. In this scenario, the, the secondary intervention or uh, perhaps even tertiary intervention is kind of is essentially supplemental to the core instruction and, and supports can support the core instruction. In some in instances, might be actually seen 
uh, the way some people refer to it, is kind of a double dosing that is kids may get, for example, their core reading instruction and then have an additional instruction that supplements and augments that. And this is compared to a model that is sometimes used um, uh, where students don't receive core instruction but during that period of time actually receive the supplemental instruction. Um, in my view, that's a model that should generally be avoided and it's not generally consistent with uh, uh, principles of uh, RTI, where secondary intervention is, is seen as supplemental to core instruction. Disability identification. Federal law states that to ensure that underachievement in a child suspected of having a specific learning disability is not due to a lack of appropriate instruction in reader math, the group must consider two things. The first is that data that demonstrate that prior to or as part of the real referral process, the child was provided appropriate instruction in regular education settings. Screening data that looks at the growth rate of students can help you answer this question. Progress monitoring data that can be shared with parents can support the next piece. Data-based documentation of repeated assessments of achievement at reasonable intervals. It's always been the case that in order to be identified as a student with a learning disability, that one needed to rule out the possibility that their lack of achievement was due to inadequate or inappropriate instruction. And the regulations following the 04 amendments really codified that requirement and basically connected it to a response to intervention. When do we refer to special education? And I'm going to provide a couple of, couple of examples of how this might be done and how different folks have approached this. When students are referred, whether it's after non-responsiveness to second interventions or non-responsiveness to tertiary interventions, it must be in accordance with state law and or district policies. If your state does not clearly indicate when to refer students, it's important to develop a district model that is in accordance with federal and state law. As seen in the previous slides, there is no one model for when special education referrals occur. Kind of as a brief aside, though, it's important to keep in mind that regardless of what the state and local rules are with regarding when a teacher or a school-based person might do a referral, that the parents under federal law and regulations really have the right to refer their child at any point in the process. Okay, in this first example, which is based on models from uh, Doug and Lynn Fuchs, it shows that referral to special education occurs after non-responsiveness to two evidence-based secondary interventions. In this model, responsiveness to tertiary instruction is a, is a component of the comprehensive evaluation. It's important to point out that in this model, tertiary instruction is, is, is considered to be special education. If effective, 80% of students should be benefiting from the special education, from the specialized services uh, that they receive. Um, that is, 80% of the 15% that are um, identified in the, in the chart. When do we refer to special education as a second example? In this example, and this is based on um, examples drawn from sites across the country, the district indicates that referral to special education occurs after a student demonstrates non-responsiveness to one evidence-based secondary intervention, and then non-responsiveness to a more intensive tertiary intervention. In this model, data demonstrating the provision of appropriate instruction in general ed settings includes progress writing data collected from both the secondary and tertiary interventions. So presumably in this model, the student is not sufficiently responsive to the secondary intervention and in addition is not sufficiently responsive to the uh, tertiary intervention. And at that point, um, the student under this model might be referred for the special education evaluation. Recommendations. Across both examples, it's a important that there is collaboration between special education and regular education in order to develop an inclusive, multi-level prevention model for students. Both of these examples are appropriate for referral to special education, but a lack of consistency in their implementation across the district can create inconsistency in inequity in service delivery models. Districts should provide clear guidance about where the referral process fits within the multi-level prevention system the roles and responsibilities of special education staff, when students should be referred for eligibility consideration, and the role of parents 
and parent notification in this process. For those of you that are interested in uh, additional information, particularly related to the policy guidance that the Office of Special Education Programs has provided, we also have on the um, RTI Center's website which you see on the next to last slide, this presentation. On our website, we have uh, another webinar called RTI and LD Identification, which um, is available on the website and provides a much more intensive review of all of the OSEP policy letters and the relevant uh, statutory provisions that are important to keep in mind as one goes about using RTI, particularly as it relates to identifying kids with learning disabilities. We thank you for your interest in the work of the center, for your attendance to this webinar, and look forward to you visiting our website uh, to take advantage of other resources available. Thank you very much.